Hello, my dear students and learners. Welcome to this presentation in which we are going to learn about computer secondary storage devices and the media. My name is Meme JM and I run a YouTube channel by the name Emily Swap ICT from where you can be able to access various contents in the field of ICT and the computers. In this presentation, we are going to learn about introduction to secondary storage devices. Then we are going to look at the classification of secondary storage devices and media according to technology used to store data and according to portability. We shall also look at magnetic tapes, the magnetic disks, the optical disks, and the optical tapes. The secondary storage devices and media are also called auxiliary or backup storage devices. These are alternative long-term storage locations or devices used to store data and information that is not a part of the main memory. The storage is a term that describes how a computer retains data in a form for later use and in a form that is convenient to you as the user. A storage device consists of two parts. These are the storage medium on which information is stored and a storage drive that writes information to the medium and reads from it. When we talk about a secondary storage device, we are referring to a non-volatile memory external to the computer's processor that is used for storage of large amounts of data required for long-term usage. And therefore, the secondary storage devices have several characteristics, which include, number one, the information stored in them is not directly accessed by the CPU, and therefore, it must be transferred to main memory in order to be accessed by the CPU. Number two, the processing of data that is found in the storage medium is slower because the access time is slower depending on the type of device used in storing that data. In addition, it is used to store data and instructions when they are not being processed. Number four, the information stored in them is more permanent than main memory since data and instructions are retained when the power is turned off. Number five, it's much cheaper than primary storage and you can have as much of it as you can afford. Number six, it's used for mass storage of programs and files not currently being processed. And number seven, data is usually accessed using read write hands. The hands transfer the data to or from a device. And therefore, there are various factors that we need to consider in order to be able to determine the type of device and the media that you are going to use to store your data. These include the storage capacity, which is how much data the device can store, the access speed, which is the time needed to locate the data and transmit it to the CPU, the size, which is a necessary factor for storage on shelves, and also for portability, and the cost, which is the total amount that you need to use in purchasing the storage medium, depending on its capacity. And therefore, the two methods of classifying secondary storage devices are according to technology used to store data and according to portability. When we want to classify the secondary storage devices according to technology used to store data, we can be able to classify the secondary storage devices into two categories, which are the magnetic storage medium and the optical storage medium. The magnetic storage devices are those ones in which data is recorded on them magnetically through the use of magnetic charges. These devices include the floppy diskets, magnetic tapes, zip disks, jazz disks, hard disks, and flash disks. 
while the optical devices are those devices in which data is recorded and read from using a laser beam, which is a very strong concentrated light. Some of these devices include the compact disks, the digital versatile disks, the optical cant, the optical tape, and LS120 super disks. When we want to classify the secondary storage devices and media according to portability, we have two categories or classes of the devices, which are the removable or external secondary storage devices and the fixed or what we call the internal secondary storage devices and media. The removable or external secondary storage devices and media are those ones which are not housed inside the system unit and this enables them to be carried and used with any other computer. Examples of such devices are the magnetic tapes, magnetic disks, the optical disks, flash disks, and removable hand disks. Well, the fixed devices that we are also calling the internal secondary storage devices are those devices and the media that are housed inside the system unit and they are therefore used while they are inside the system unit. Examples of such devices are the hard disks, which are normally fixed inside the system unit. So what are magnetic tapes? These are a sequential access storage medium made of a plastic-like material ribbon that is coated with a layer of iron oxide film on which data is recorded as magnetized or unmagnetized spots. They are used primarily to back up or duplicate data and the programs, and they can be illustrated as follows. From both the external appearance and also in terms of how they look internally. In order to be able to read or write information on a tape, it must be inserted on a magnetic tape drive. The magnetic tape can be stored either on reels, that is reel to reel tapes, or cartridges, that is cartridge tape, or in the form of cassettes, that is cassette tape. The magnetic tape resembles the music cassette. The magnetic tape is not suitable for data files that are revised or updated often because it stores data sequentially. This means that data is retrieved in the order in which it was stored. And therefore, accessing the data in this medium is very slow as you cannot be able to go directly from one item of data to the next on the tape. It is therefore necessary to begin at the beginning of the tape and search for the data as the tape goes past the hands. And therefore the eight main features of magnetic tapes are, number one, it is a half inch wide. Number two, it has a plastic base coated with magnetizable material on one side. Number three, data is stored in terms of tracks. Number four, an aluminum strip marks the physical beginning of the tape recording purposes and end of tape is marked with an end of real marker. Number five, the recording density can vary per inch. And number six, the tape is reusable, erasable, and moderately durable. Well, number seven is that the same tape can be used for both input and output. And number eight is that it has a storage capacity of up to 40 million bytes per reel. Therefore, a magnetic tape cartridge or a cassette is a device in which a magnetic tape is threaded to overcome the bother of loading and unloading tapes, thus giving the tape a greater protection against dust and dirt. A digital audio tape is a tape produced in the form of a 4 millimeter, millimeter cassettes used mostly to store audio data from the computer, and this data can then be scanned into a magnetic tape. And therefore, the main advantages of using magnetic tapes are that they are easy to carry and store. They store large amounts of data for long periods relative to their size. They are cheap. They are effective when used to store sequential files for bunch applications, 
They are very good for backups and for archives. However, the magnetic tapes also have certain disadvantages, which include that data is run sequentially, which makes it take too long before certain data is retrieved. And therefore, they are slow because of the linear storage of data records on the tape. In addition, the data stored in them can be distorted by environmental factors such as moisture, dust, and other such factors. Similarly, wastage of storage space occurs between successive data records, which is referred to as interrecord gap or IRG. In addition, these devices have a limited shelf life of about two years, and they are difficult to update files because they cannot make changes to a record without writing over the entire tape. Magnetic disks. These are direct access storing devices made of a mela, that is a plastic material or metallic platter on which electronic data can be stored. They have a magnetic disk platter that stores data. Direct access means that you can go directly to a specific piece of data without having to access any other data either before or after the data that you want. The capacity and access speeds of magnetic disks vary with each device or medium. Examples of such disks are the floppy disks, jazz disks, zip disks, high FT disks, and hard disks. It is important to note that some of these storage media are outdated and may not be found in the current computing environment, such as the floppy diskettes. So what were the floppy diskettes? They were also called the micro floppies. This was a removable magnetic storage medium that would hold about 1.44 megabytes of information that was stored as electromagnetic charges on a small flexible circular plastic-like material that was coated with iron oxide and covered with a plastic protective case. They were inserted on a floppy disk drive that was abbreviated as A colon in order for the information to be read or written into them with the use of read write hand. And here is an illustration of a floppy drive front side. These are also the floppy disk drives external and the floppy disk drive internal. A floppy disk was contained in a hard plastic case which was used to protect it from dust and grease. The following is a picture illustrating a floppy disket from both the front side and the back side. The floppy diskets evolved from eight inches to five and a quarter to three and a half, and the most recent development was about two and a half inch diskets. The storage capacity went on increasing from one size to the next. They were called floppy diskets because the data was recorded on them in a circular plastic-like material that was soft and flexible, as you can see. The floppy disks came in two major grains, which were the single and double-sided. The single-sided abbreviated as SS disk was of low density and was certified by the manufacturers to be good on only one side. While the double-sided DS disks could be recorded on both sides and were of high density. Before you would begin using a new diskette, you were always supposed to format it first. So what is formatting? Formatting is the process of preparing a new disk for use by imprinting empty sectors and tracks on the surface of the disk so that the operating system can recognize and be able to access it. It's writing electronic information on the disk to be recognized by the computer as a valid storing device. The internal surface of a disk is divided into tiny, invisible, concentric circles or rings that are called tracks used to store data. Each track is further divided into invisible, wedge-shaped units known as sectors. This diagram illustrates the internal structure of a disk, which also 
is almost similar to the internal structure of other storage mediums like the hard disks and even the optical disks. The data is organized in terms of tracks and the tracks are numbered from zero upwards and bases from the outer side towards the center. Then the tracks are divided into sectors and these sectors are further divided into bits. Then we have the disk platter or the mailer, which is the section that is outside or around the platter. In order to be able to calculate the capacity of a diskette, you are supposed to multiply the number of bytes per sector times the number of sectors per track, and then times the number of tracks per side, and finally times the number of sides per disk. A sector is defined as the amount of data that can be read from or written to a disk by the computer in one read-write operation. When a disk is formatted, the following usually happens. Number one, all the data in the disk is erased. Number two, the surfaces of the disk are checked for any physical or magnetic defects. And number three, a file allocation table is created to record where data is entered. The five main features of a floppy disk were, number one, it was covered and protected within a rigid, smooth lined protective plastic casing. Number two, the cover was a slot giving the disk drive hence access to the disk. Number three, the data was stored on tracks, sectors, and cylinders. Number four, they had low storage capacity compared to other storage devices. And number five is that the data in them was read and written in multiples of one or more sectors. The four main uses of floppy diskettes was, number one, its primary medium for backing storage on small microcomputer systems. They were used to supply software for use on microcomputers. The medium on them was used to collect or input data. And they were used as backup medium for small hand disks. In order to read or write information on a floppy disk, it was inserted on a floppy disk drive, which activated a turntable that rotated the disket and brought the read right hand into contact with the disk. The read right hand then moved to and fro across the disk in order either to record on the disk surface or to read back data which was previously or had previously been recorded. The following were the external parts of a floppy disket. These parts included protective flap, index hole, the hub, speed hole, the label, the right protective tab or notch, plastic case or jacket, the recording window, that is the read-write window, and the stress relief cutouts. The following were therefore the functions of the various parts of a floppy diskette. The index timing hole was used to determine the relative position of the disk. The right protected tab protected data from being erased or written over. The stress relief cutouts were positions or sections that were used to position the disk family on the drive for easy reading. The recording window allowed the read right hand to read or write data on the disk. Or the hub or ring or speedo was used to hold the disk in order to rotate it. The plastic case or jacket protected the disk from damage, or the manual label was used for writing the owner or the name of what the disk contained for identification purposes and the protective flap covered the ring right window when the disk was not in use. So what are the main advantages of using floppy diskettes? Number one, they provide direct access to data that was stored in them. They were small and very portable. They were easy to store. They were suitable for backing up small files and also they had some improved data security. This is because you could store small files that you didn't want other computer users to see. However, the use of floppy diskettes and also certain disadvantages. 
This included, number one, they were relatively slow to access because of their rotational spins, which was slow. Number two, they had very small storage capacities that was insufficient for files that contained graphics or audio data. They were also prone to damage by various factors, such as exposing to sunlight, magnetism, or that, and they had a limited shelf life of about two years. Whenever you are handling or you are handling the magnetic storage devices, it is important to protect the data on them by observing a certain number of precautions, which include, number one, you should not expose them to strong magnetic fields because this can damage or erase the magnetically recorded data. Number two, you should keep them away from excessive heat because it weakens their ability to store data. Number three, you should not drop the disk on the ground or on hard surfaces. Number four, you should keep them away from liquids, darkness, dust, or dirt. Number five, do not bend disks or handle them roughly. Number six, you should not touch the exposed portions of a disk. Number seven, you should always take care while inserting or removing the disk from the computer's disk drive. Number eight, you should not leave the disk in the drive. This is because if you do, the read write head may remain resting on the disk surface. Number nine, always scan them for viruses in order to ensure that they are safe from unwanted programs. Some other standards or variations of floppy disks that have been developed to provide a higher storage capacity than that of a standard floppy include, number one, the zip disks. These are the disks that held as much as 750 MB of data and were inserted on a zip drive to operate. They were slightly larger and thicker in size than normal floppy diskets, and they were mostly used for backing up and archiving personal computer files. They were used to transfer large files from one computer to another, and this is how the zip disk drives looked like. The other variation are the jazzy disks. These disks had a high storage capacity of about 1 GB to 2 GB and more, and were written and read from while inserted in a jazz drive. And they were used for storing data that required large storage. Then we have the high FT disks that had a capacity of up to 200 MB. They could function while inserted on the high FD drives. And these drives could also read to base standard disks or could be used to read the standard disks, which were the 1.44 MB floppy diskets. The other type of magnetic disks are the hand disks, also called the Winchester disks. These disks are found in sealed units in which are shiny, rigid magnetic or magnetic platters arranged vertically on a common axis on which information data is read and written into with the use of a read-write hand. And these illustrations indicate the external appearance and the internal appearance of a hard disk drive. The hard disk drive contained two read-write hands that can read or write data on both sides, that is, per platter. And therefore, if a hand disk drive contained several platters, there were also several multiples of two read write the hands for a platter. The surfaces of each disk is divided into tracks and sectors like those found in a floppy disket. The tracks along the common axis forms an imaginary cylinder. A cylinder is the number of tracks on one surface of a platter. As the disk rotates, the read write hand moves in and out over the surface to record and read data. Hand disks come in a variety of sizes, but all have a very high storage capacity compared to other storage mediums like the floppy diskets. And these capacities could range from 1 GB and above. They provide direct access to data and therefore reducing the time needed to retrieve information. The hand disks are referred to as Winchester disks because 
They are fixed in hermetically sealed disk units and have robust mechanical features. The technology associated with sealed units is referred to as Winchester technology. The hand disks are read and written into using hand disk drives that are normally abbreviated as C colon for the machines that contain a single hand disk. And these letters can move up based on the number of drives that are in the system unit. The hand disks are sealed because they spin faster and have increased density and therefore they need to be protected from dust and other damaging agents. In order to read or write data on a hard disk, the read write head positions itself over the first track of each surface. All the arms holding the read write hands are fixed together and they move closer as one when accessing a surface on the disk page. When reading or writing data, the disk is driven at a high number of revolutions per minute and access can only be made to its surfaces when the disk removes. As the disk rotates, the read write head moves in and out over the surface to record or read data. The access time, that is the time to get data from a spinning disk with one read write head is a combination of the following. Number one, the seek time. This is how long it takes the hand to get to the right track. The seek operation is the process whereby and drives access and moves the read write hand on a disk in order to read or write on a particular part. Such operation is the process whereby and drive rotates the disk to the proper position. Number two, we have rotational delay or latency time. This is the time it takes for the data to rotate under the hand. And number three, we have the transmission time, which is the time it takes to read the data and transmit it to the CPU. The hard disks, especially the new ones, must be formatted before any data can be stored in them. The computer keeps track of what it has put somewhere on a disk by recording the addresses of all the sectors used in terms of a combination of the cylinder, a track, and the sector numbers. The two types of hard disks are the fixed disk unit, FDU, that are found inside the system unit and exchangeable disk unit, EDU, that is external. So what are the fixed hand drives? The fixed hand drives are also called the internal hand disks. These are hand disks that are housed inside the system unit and attached to the motherboard by a special cable. They are not removable and they vary in storage capacities. This diagram illustrates the internal hand disk. Well, the external hand disks are those hand disks that are used especially when there is no space in the system unit to house another hand disk drive, and they are therefore connected to the system unit through a special cable externally. They are easily removed and connected to another computer, thereby giving them a certain amount of portability and flexibility of use. And this diagram, this diagram illustrates an external hard disk. For larger computer systems, hand disks contains or consists mainly of removable hard disk packs, fixed disk drives, and redundant array of independent disk storage systems. The disk packs are a stack of several disk platters mounted on a common spindle that can be removed from a disk drive unit. A removable hard disk pack contains several hard disks aligned one above the other in a sealed unit. The total capacity can therefore be in the terabyte range. The hand disk cartridges are side loading removable disks with two or more platters that are sealed in a container similar to a videotape cartridge. The RAID storage system consists of a cabinet which may contain a large number of disk drives and it stores multiple copies of data on different drives. If one drive fails, others take over, allowing the data to be recovered. Data is transmitted to the central processing unit using multiple data paths. And therefore, the following are some methods that can be used to improve the amount of data that can be stored in a less space on a disk. 
Number one, increasing the syntax per track. Number two, placing the head closer to the surface of the disk. Number three, using smaller read write hand. Number four, stacking the magnetized bits vertically rather than horizontally. Number five, improving the platter surface coating. The three main ways to improve performance of the hand disk therefore are number one, disk caching. This is including a high speed RAM on a disk drive in order to hold the results of recent reads from the disk and also to predict and hold data that is likely to be requested in the near future. It helps reduce the number of physical accesses to the disk on repeated reads. Number two, data compression. Compressing a storage media contents to fit in a smaller space in order to help create more free space on the media increases the amount of data that the hand disk can hold. Number three is RAIS, setting up a cabinet containing a large number of disk drives, therefore allowing data to be transferred to the CPU using multiple data paths. A disk crash is a permanent distraction to the hand disk that is caused by scratches from the read-write hand as a result of that or improper shutdown of the computer. It is therefore important that you observe certain precautions to avoid destroying or damaging the hand disk. Some of these precautions include, number one, keeping the disk away from smoke, dust, and a strong heat to avoid scratching disk surface. Number two, switch off the computer using the correct procedure to enable the read write head move from the disk surface. Number three, do not drop the disk drives. So what are the main advantages of using hard disks? Some of the advantages include, they provide the permanent, cheap, and large storage capacity that is writable. They are fast compared to other secondary storage devices in terms of data transfer. They are also more reliable than floppy disks because there is better protection against dust and they do not deteriorate as quickly as floppy disks. However, the use of hand disks also has certain disadvantages such as they can suffer a head crash resulting to loss of data. They are sensitive to things like dust, humidity, magnets, which can corrupt the data that is stored in them. They are also inflexible because the content or the arrangement of those devices cannot be changed. And most of them are not portable and those that can be removed must have a USB cable and are only used in computers that have a USB port. Soft sector disks are the disks that are manufactured without the tracks and sectors in which data can be stored and therefore they require to be formatted before use. The other types of storing media are the optical disks. These are disks on which data is recorded and read from with the use of a very strong concentrated beam of light that is called laser and are made from a type of plastic called polycarbonate. A metal coating, usually aluminum, reflects the laser light back to a sensor. So the main types of optical disks are LS120 super disks, the optical tape, the optical cant, compact disks, and DVDs. So what is LS120 super disks? This is a high storage capacity disket that resembles the three and a half floppy disket but uses optical technology to record data and has about 120 MB with greater speed of data retrieval than a floppy diskette. It is used in an LS120 disk drive, and this drive could read and write both the three and a half inch 1.44 MB floppy disks and the 120 MB super disks. The optical CAD is an optical device that resembles micro CAD with an optically recordable stripe on which information is stored concerning customer details used in banking and in other business organizations. The third type is optical tape. This is a sequential access storage medium 
made of a ribbon of metal material that resembles music cassette on which data is stored using optical technology. It is primarily used for backup or to duplicate data and the programs. The other type is the compact disks or CDs. These are used for storing information and data that require a lot of space and hold as much as 700 MB and are very portable and efficient for carrying large quantity of data from one computer to another easily. The three basic types of such CDs are the CD-ROM, CD-R, and CD-RW or WR. So what are the compact disks read only memory, that is CD-ROMs? These are CDs that come from the industry with information already recorded on them that you cannot change. And therefore, you can only be able to read or access what is on the disk, but you cannot be able to add or change anything in them. The data in them is written using a powerful laser beam to burn patterns in the surface. And here are, is an example of a compact disk read only memory indicating the upper side and the inner side. And as you can see, they are labeled as CD ROM, but sometimes they may not be labeled, but they will be having some write ups on them. Data is represented as a series of pits and lines. A pit is a literal depression formed by the laser burning into the data layer when the CD is created, while the land is the part between the pits or the smooth surface. Reading the CD is done by shining a laser light at the disk and detecting changing reflecting patterns, whereby when it reflects off the smooth surface, that is the land, it is interpreted as a one bit, while when the laser enters a pit, there is no reflection, and therefore that is interpreted as a zero bit. A CD-ROM drive lets you read or play a CD. The higher the rotational speed of this drive, the faster the data access and the faster information can be transferred from a CD to the computer's memory. Examples of such spins are 48, 50, 56 and 100 X spins. The CD-ROMs are useful for storing software packages for sale or distribution and for storing multimedia application software packages and music. The CD changers or CD jukeboxes are used to give quick access to several CDs, thus allowing billions of bytes of data to be easily retrieved and automatically accessed online. Some CD-ROM drives one double speed, triple speed, one day speed, six speed, and eight speed. And these diagrams illustrate the front side of a CD drive and also a CD drive itself. Some advantages of using CD-ROMs include that they store very large volumes of data compared to diskettes. They are smaller and more portable compared to diskettes, and they were more secure, or they are more secure as they cannot be changed or tracked or attacked by viruses. However, the use of CD-ROMs has also certain disadvantages such as not being possible to change data written on them. They are expensive than diskettes, and the content in them cannot be erased, and therefore you cannot store what you want in them. The jukeboxes are mostly applicable for handling CDs in systems where large amounts of data have been archived and occasionally put online for reference purposes. The other type of CDs are the CD recordable or CDR. They are also called the CD WOM, that is compact disk write once and read many. These are CDs that are normally bought while blank or empty, but once the user records on them either a program or information, that information cannot be changed again. And the information is written on them with the use of a CD writer or a banner. And you can be able to identify them with the acronym CDR, as you can see from my illustration on the diagram.
they allow the writer to write information on them only once, but then allow him or her to read this information as many times as possible, and that's why they are referred to as CD, warm. They hold data permanently, and therefore there is no overwriting. They are thus very useful for storing information that is not likely to change in the future. They are played or read from on a CD writer or any CD drive or DVD drive. Once written unto them, a CD-R becomes a CD-ROM, and their capacity can range between 750 to 800 MBs. The other type of CDs are the compact disc recitables. They are also called erasable optical discs. They are reusable CDs that are initially blank and information recorded on them or is recorded on them using a CD writer can be altered or replaced as many times as possible, just as one would have done with a floppy disk or a flash disk. Writing information on an optical disk is called burning. They can be read from on any CD or DVD drive. The data layer of these disks uses a phase changing metal alloy film. By using a higher intensity laser light, the film can be melted to level out the marks made by the laser burner when the data was stored, effectively erasing previously stored data. New data can then be recorded using a lower intensity light to burn the new data. They are very ideal for backup storage for storing large volumes of data that change frequently. The other type of optical disks are the digital versatile disks or DVDs. These are also called the digital video disks. These are a very high storage capacity optical disks in comparison to the other optical disks that resemble compact disks and offer very high and digital quality sound and pictures. They are suitable for recording motion pictures because they offer for you to be able to identify a CD or a DVD from CDs, you look for the acronym DVD and their variety is similar to the variety of CDs. They offer very high storage capacity of up to 17 GB and above, equivalent to 26, 640 MB disks. The main types of DVDs are the DVD ROM, DVD R, and DVD RW, and are therefore similar to CDs with a difference being on the capacity of information that they can store. The DVDs are capable of holding much more information than CDs because the tracks on a DVD are placed closer together as compared to CD and therefore allowing more tracks. They offer very high storage capacity. As we have already said, the pits in them is stored or the pits in them are also much smaller in a DVD than a CD, thereby allowing more information to be stored in them. In addition, some DVDs are double-sided. This allows data to be stored on both sides and thereby dramatically increasing the disk capacity. The DVDs are recorded data on them using a DVD writer or banner, and information on them can be read from using any DVD drive. They are useful for storing movies. What are some precautions you are supposed to observe while handling optical disks? Number one, the CDs and DVDs should be stored in their cases when not in use to prevent them from being scratched or getting dirty. Number two, avoiding swelling the surface of the CD or DVDs by holding them by the edge or center hole. Number three, you should always keep your CDs or DVDs clean by gently wiping both sides with a clean damp cloth from the center to the outer edge and not wiping around the disc. This is because wiping in a circle can create a curved scratch, which can confuse the laser. For a stubborn dart, use isopropyl alcohol or methanol, a CD DVD cleaning detergent. You should also not write on the top side of the CD with a ballpoint pen or other hand objects 
as this can damage the data layer on the other side. Always use a CD marker instead. Number five, do not write on the top side with a fine point marker or with any solvent based marker. That is solvent need to solve the protective layer. And you should also avoid exposing the CDs or DVDs to high temperature or humidity for an extended period of time as the CD or DVD may warp. So what are the main characteristics of optical disks? The main characteristics of optical disks include they are much sturdier and more durable than tapes or floppy disks. They are not usually sensitive to being casually touched, though they, they too can get dirty or scratched. However, despite this, they can be cleaned easily with a soft cloth. They are unaffected by magnetic fields and they hold much more data than floppy disks, while at the same time providing direct access to data stored in them. However, there can be data loss in optical disks as a result of physical damage, that is breaking, melting, or scratching, blocking of laser light by that paint, ink, and glue, or by corrosion of the reflecting layer. So the main advantages of using optical disks include, they provide direct access to data, they have fast data transfer speeds, they have vast storage capacity compared to diskettes, they are portable, they can be cleaned easily with a soft cloth, they are unaffected by magnetic fields and the data stored in them is more stable and more permanent than the magnetic media. However, the use of optical disks also has certain disadvantages, such as the data that is stored on them cannot be changed. In addition, the access times are slower than hard disks and the DVD may not be widely used and they also break easily. The other type of storage media are the flash memory storage devices, also called flash memories, flash drives, or flash memory cards. These are non-volatile, high-capacity removable storage devices laminated inside a small piece of plastic whose block of memory cells is erased in a single action or flash. And these diagrams illustrate some two types of flash disks and a memory card. The flash memory technology is based on EEPROM. The data in a flash memory can be erased as a block at a time instead of only a single byte at a time as is in the case with the EEPROM. A flash memory drive is a flash memory storage device for a computer that is small enough to fit in your pocket and usually plugs directly into a USB port. The major visible difference between flash memory and magnetic or optical storage media, therefore, is that flash memory cans don't need a drive with mechanical motors to spin disks, nor hence moving in and out to grab the information off the disk. A flash memory can reader is a device that has one or more slots into which you can slide the appropriate flash memory card so that you can transfer the information between your computer and the flash memory card or between different types of flash memory cards. The compact nature of flash memory enables it to be incorporated into very small solid state, that is non-moving parts, devices that are available in all shapes and forms. The flash memory cards are used in digital steel cameras and in other devices. Example, the smart media, the multimedia card, secure digital memory stick, and XD picture cans. In many electronic devices like in PCs, serophones, PDAs, cable TV, set top boxes, and video game controllers. The other names of flash memory storage devices are the flash drive, flash pen, flash disk, USB drive, USB drive, and other similar terms. The flash memory storage drives are used by plugging them into a USB port on the computer. And the USB drives have storage capacities ranging from 8 MB to 16 MB and many, many more. So the main advantages of flash disks include they are highly portable because they are physically very small and that, therefore they are very convenient. They are highly compatible because they are plug and play devices. They have large storage capacities compared to floppy diskettes and CDs and DVDs. The data stored in them is also accessed directly by the CPU and therefore they have fast access spins. However, the use of flash disks also has certain disadvantages such as 
many need special software depending on the version of operating system being used. And the data stored in them can be rewritten and therefore they may get corrupted or lost. We have come to the end of this topic on secondary storage device and, and media. Congratulations for choosing to acquire computer and ICT knowledge and skills from us through our YouTube channel by the name MLSWAP ICT. You can search for more computer and ICT topics from the MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel. In addition, you can search for life skills and motivational topics from our other YouTube channel by the name MLSWAP Enterprises International. Kindly click on subscribe button and hit the notification bell in both of the YouTube channels for current updates from both if you have not already done so. In case you need any additional correspondence, you can always write it to us through our email, which is mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Wish you success in all your other studies emanating from the various videos for ICT and the computer that are posted in the YouTube channel MLSWAP ICT. God bless you.